Well, folks, it's that special time of year again. Thanksgiving. Where we spend time with our family or close friends and think about the things in our lives that have brought us joy, things for which we are thankful. For example, I am thankful for my family and the joy that they bring me and the continual support that they bring me. I am very thankful for such members of my family who always look out for me as Buster Posey, Brandon Crawford, Stephen Curry, Draymond Green, Andre Iguodala, Juan Toscano Anderson, Debo Samuel, George Kittle, Brandon Ayuk, Steve Kerr, to name a few. My very large family that cares for me very deeply. Now this year I want to share a tradition One that in the spirit of nonviolence and peace does not involve slaughtering, roasting, and feasting upon an animal, but rather involves something more lighthearted, a simple craft. Today, my family who is with me and I will be making hand turkeys. Now hand turkeys are a very simple craft that anybody can make and if for some reason uh, you know they're they're differently abled or have certain physical restrictions they can always get somebody to help them. So the basic is you just take a piece of paper like we have here put your hand down and you trace it. That's a trace of my hand. What you want to do is you take the bottom, flatten it out, these are going to be the legs of the turkey. Tiny legs. Take this part, this is the head of the turkey. Eye, beak, maybe some feathers. And then you can feel free to color this however you'd like. Attach feathers to here. Add color. And, you know, put this on your refrigerator or something. I don't know. It's your house, your apartment, your place of residence, your dormitory. You do what you want. It's not up to me. So in particular on this Thanksgiving day, I want to talk about something that's very near and dear to my heart. And that something is settler colonialism. Now, Thanksgiving is a very troubled day because when we talk about Thanksgiving, the way I was raised about Thanksgiving in the US was that there were early British settlers to this land, and they were starving. They didn't know where to go, and so they went and found a group of local indigenous people who fed them and gave them shelter, and that was the inaugural Thanksgiving. 
The issue with this story of Thanksgiving is that it neglects to tell the part where at the end of this meal, the white man repaid the indigenous tribe by giving them their diseases, slaughtering them, hunting their game, poisoning their waters, and driving them away from their ancestral territories. Here we have the feet. Sock monkey, you know, he did what he could. I guess this is more of a turkey chick than a full hand turkey, but you know, we can put some feathers on here. Um, it's a turkey chick, a little nugget, I suppose. Maybe if we make some wings. That's a turkey. I'm into it. Next, let's have uh, Buaya make his, uh, his turkey. Now, as I was saying, it's, uh, it's a holiday where, you know, we're taught to celebrate the generosity of the indigenous person, when in reality, this generosity was taken advantage of, and soon what happened was a wide-scale slaughter on the scale of genocide, if not full extinction of a people and uh, their numbers, certainly a, a total displacement of their way of life and uh, their language and everything of that sort. Now, Maybe we should start a new page and try this again. Like I said, if you're having trouble, you can have somebody help you. Let's see if we can do this. That's a very promising looking turkey, Bawaya. Excited to see how it turns out. Now something we neglect to mention in our history lessons is genocide for one thing, but the fact that after this whole campaign of pushing indigenous people as far as we could off their lands, We've never spoken about ways to give that land back or achieve some sort of cultural redress. This is something that's, that's very uh, prevalent in Canada, the idea of, of reconciliation, of land acknowledgement, of saying, you know, if I'm in Vancouver, I'm on the traditional unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh peoples. In the United States, that's something that is said among particular social justice circles in the West Coast. But for the large part, we are unaware of the land on which we are seated. And in the case of living in Michigan, where I currently do, you drive around on the highway and you see people who have bumper stickers that say, Native Michigander. They say native and more often than not these are white people of European ancestry claiming nativeness to forget everything of the Potawatomi people who live on these lands or of the other indigenous tribes that are from these lands there is an erasure that is happening that we must not allow happen. We must always give our thanks to the traditional stewards of this land and consider how we can give back, 
how we can make sure that we are not perpetuating these systems of oppression. Now when we gather for Thanksgiving in the future, I want us to seriously consider the people who have been displaced and the process of us setting up this holiday that largely prepares us for the excess of Christmas. Of course, the day after Thanksgiving in the United States is Black Friday, which in capitalist society is a way of saying, buy everything you possibly can for one another. It doesn't matter how much you are suffering, how much pain is in your life, but if you buy and participate in capital, things, physical things, can make you feel better. We need to think about the labor that goes into making those things. The waste that goes into shipping those things. Which Chinese child's hands made that toy? Which sweatshop laborer in Bangladesh or Vietnam made those clothes? How much petrol did it take to put those in boxes and ship them across the world so that you could get those clothes in two days? Are those clothes made of natural materials or are they made of polyester and viscose and rayon and things that at their essence are made more of oil than of natural fabrics? These are things we need to think about because these practices are destroying the earth and are polluting the very land that once belonged to different groups of people. Land that on this day of Thanksgiving we celebrate as bestowed onto us or given to us with generosity. But that is not the case. We stole this land and we are polluting it. I want us to make these Thanksgiving turkeys and think of excess and destruction and death and then ask ourselves, what are we thankful for? What will the next generation be thankful for? and what will be left for the generation after that. Happy Thanksgiving.